Hello, my name is Joshua Shulman, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Entertainment here at Vectorworks. Today, I'm joined by Jim Woodward, our Senior Entertainment Industry Specialist. Jim and I have had a prior conversation about a conceptual design for an award show pictured here. As you can see, it will include a platform, some stairs, a scenic wall, and a couple of video screens. We will be using both freeform modeling techniques as well as parametric tools in this design exercise. Join us as we explore the art of scenic design in Vectorworks. Jim, over to you. Thank you, Josh. As we talked about before, the components I put into some save views and we'll work our way through some staging, uh, stairways, and a back wall. Let's get started with the stage by going to a multi-pane view. And we'll start at downstage center being zero, zero of the riser deck. We talked about 32 feet wide by uh, about eight feet deep. So Correct. we'll start with that. And instead of putting decks in individually, let's use the spotlight command event create stage. We'll go with the defaults for right now. The only thing I want to do is change these to legs braced. Now we're going to have an upstage wall that has a portal, so we'll need an upstage escape ramp. So why don't we put two of these decks and duplicate those while we're in this view. Let's put in some railings to the back on those six decks. And then also let's put some escape steps into the upstage center. We'll select from the event tools. We have the stage steps. I'm going to use self-adjusting and we're going to do about 14 steps. That should complete our stage for right now. Next thing I want to do is add some fascia. We were talking about this could be video later on. It could be fabric. But for right now, let's just put the surface and we can assign that to a class and change that later. Let's go into 3D tools, excuse me, 2D tools. And with the auto plane mode with a polygon tool, I can easily snap to the corners of the deck. I want this to be just a little larger. So let's use the offset tool and bump that out just a little bit. Now I want to turn this into a NURBS curve. And the reason for that is that I can take one of those and duplicate and then move that down 96 inches to the floor. I'm then able to take in the 3D tool set the loft surface in the no rail mode and select both of those and create a surface from that. We want that to be a solid. And then if we assign that to a class, We'll get our texture. Now, the next thing we want to do is add some stairways. As we were talking before, we were thinking um, about 16 feet for the center stairway, um, curved to the, the upstage decks at about 96 inches. So let's start off with the stairway, and we'll go back to our multi-view mode. Now let's start off, rather than create the stairs from scratch, we'll use the simple stair tool. Let's change those to open riser and a width of 16 feet. That'll be our maximum at the bottom. And then let's also change that to match the height of the stage. We'll select this and line it up with the risers. Now, from any 3D view, we can easily just take this and ungroup it and get the geometry without having to draw everything individually. I'm going to take one of the stringers, and we're just going to remove that for now. Now, we want to have a curvature to this, so let's use the polyline tool. And we'll start from the bottom corner. About uh, 48 inches at the top, we were talking. So let's 
snap that to one of those decks. And then I'm also going to use a polygon tool to close this. Selecting both of those, I can compose that into one object. I'm going to extrude this so it goes all the way through those stairs at about 108 inches using the mirror tool we can select both of those as well as the stairs and you'll see when we do a subtract solids we just select the one we want to retain and we're left with the stringers jim that looks now, great. thanks we do want to take the stringers we'll move one of those over mirror tool for the second one we would want to put a little more support about under those but we'll worry about that later so then we have our curve steps but we want to put a railing onto this nice feature with using a nerbs curve is that we can use this in a couple of different ways let's start off with selecting a nerbs curve we want to be in interpolation mode and that'll allow me to just snap to the top of these treads. Don't have to do every one. And that should give me a nice curve that'll follow those stairs. Now we're going to use some schedule 40 tubing. As we talked about, we were going to do some two inch tubing. So we'll just put that from a circle. I'm going to select both of those for a second and I'm going to duplicate those I'm going to need those two again in just a second. Now, the first thing I want to do is select the curve in one of the circles and use in model extrude along path. I want to make sure I have this curve selected. And I'm then going to move this up 18 inches. I'm going to duplicate that and then move that one up. So I have the two railings. Now I need the posts. I'm going to select that circle and extrude that to a height of 36 inches. And then I'm going to select the curve one more time and use another great command, the duplicate along path. I want to do, I'm going to try seven to start. We'll see where that one ends up. And I'll move those up 18 inches as well. Now I would want to go and I can adjust each of these from a side view and match each of those steps. I'll save that for later. I'm going to select all of those and just combine that into one solid. Add solid. And then I'll assign that. What do you think for a finish on those? You want to go with um, aluminum? Black. Just like black? jet. Yeah, jet black is okay. fine. Mm -hmm. All right. I got a class for that. And then I'll also select these three components and assign those. Let's do a brushed aluminum stainless look for right now. I like that easily, contrast. Easily change later. I'm going to select that railing and mirror to the other side. So I think that covers the center stairway. Now, the side stairs, we've probably eaten up a lot of the budget with this curved stair, so you want to do something a little more off the shelf. We'll go and select a circular stair. We'll get, uh, I have uh, an idea for a 16-footer that I have a railing that'll match, so you want to try that one? Yeah, that sounds perfect. All right, let's rotate that 90 degrees, and we'll take this corner and line it up to the decks. I do have a railing for that, so let's go and we'll put that in place. Now that symbol for the railing already has a class assigned to it, but I do need to assign the circular stairs to the same finish as the curved stairs. So now that works. So let's use the mirror tool for the other side. 
Anything else we need to add to that? That's looking pretty good, huh? No, I think that's looking great. Should we work on the back wall next? Sounds good. Let's do this wall. I'm going to start with some NURBS curves. Now I want to move in to a control point mode. I'm going to start upstage center. I'm going to work just upstage. I'll move this down in just a second. And just going to kind of create kind of a free flow curve. From working from the center, I can just use the mirror tool and then select both of those. And once again, compose that into one. Now, we were talking, we were going to have um, some of the rental uh, modular panels to create the back wall. Correct. I brought one in. I just created one, and we'll use that one. If we want to change that, we can swap them out at any point and just to change the symbol. So let's start with this NURBS curve, and I'm going to duplicate that. What are you thinking for a height here? Like 32 feet. Sounds good. 32. And then I'm going to use that same technique with the loft surface in the no rail mode by selecting those two curves. I now have a NURB surface, which allows me to get that symbol. And I'm going to drop that in anywhere in the drawing. Now let's select that in the back wall. And by going into model, create surface array. This allows me to put in the dimension for a fixed distance or a number of repetitions. I'm going to stay with this and say fixed distance of 22.5. And I'm going to omit anything that approaches the boundary. Now, if I look at this from a front view, this is one object, and I can still go in and change any of the parametric parameters of this, but I think I'm done with that for now. What I'd like to do is ungroup this and have the ability to select individual tiles. So what I'd like to do is create a portal. Um, thinking for the runway, we'll have an upstage center exit. So yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. And I'm going to select, let's say, those four rows. And I'm going to do kind of a curvature at the top. Now, instead of deleting those, I'm going to put these to a, a layer I made for anything that might move. So if it's a scenic uh, guillotine drop or something like that, I'm going to leave those just on another layer that's toggled off right now. While I'm here, let's do a little bit of deletion of some of these rows. And maybe one more. Now, I'd like this to be symmetrical, so I'm going to select this side and delete those. And then using the mirror tool, I'll get a nice symmetrical look. There we go. Now, last, we had some video screens we wanted to put in here, so let's move on to those. I had a default of, I think, um, 16, 9, and they were about 20 feet wide. Yeah, a couple of rear projection screens. Sounds good. And we'll put those on some scaffolding. They're going to be on a goal post. We'll adjust the height in just a second, and we'll put that on three sections of scaffolding. Now I'm going to move these down just a second. I do want to go and take this wall in from a top view. Let's move that downstage so 
it will line up with those risers. Nice. And then we'll just take the projector, or the screen, shall I say, and we'll line that up so it lines up for a leg. Now we do want to change the height of that, so let's take a look. I'm going to guess about 12 feet, maybe a little bit more, maybe just slightly up. That work? Uh, yeah. Can we change the image on that screen, Jim? Uh, absolutely. We'll edit that screen. We'll just put a placeholder for right now. There we go. Using the mirror tool. We'll put one to the other side. So I think that's getting pretty close. Let's take a look from a perspective. Two save views and an animation in between them. What do you think? I think that's really impressive, Jim. Uh, this looks really great, and I think we're in a great starting position to continue on later. Jim, thanks so much. My pleasure. We hope you've enjoyed this first video. Please stay tuned for the next in this series on scenic design and vector works. We will explore more freeform modeling techniques, such as deforms, offset edges, and tapered extrudes. We will also dive deeper into textures and how to make and apply them. We hope to see you there. Thank you.